Hey, everyone. Um, thanks for staying around at the end of these sessions. And uh, as just like the last speaker said, I'm, not, I'm also not in uh, sequence modeling. I'm going to talk about optimal transport. Um, so we're going to talk about um, how do you infer trajectories when you have multiple time snapshots. And uh, you could use this multiple time snapshots to actually give you some information about uh, uh, some underlying dynamics. I want to mention that um, Yuni, OK, I'm Yuni. Forget to, to introduce myself. And this is a joint work with uh, two awesome people from MIT, my advisor, uh, Tamara, and uh, Renato, our favorite Italian. And it's really nice to be here. So um, given we're all biologists, I guess it's very easy for me to state these motivations that uh, we want to infer unseen trajectories. For instance, you can see cell differentiate, and you want to sort of understand how like stem cell become fibroblast or stem cell be, become uh, whatever other cells. Or you are trying to understand how a um, heart cell become cancerous, like uh, it, it started to become cancer cells. And understanding their transformation um, will hopefully give us some um, future understanding of how we uh, deal with cancer or how we maybe reverse the differentiation and go back to, uh, go back to stem cell. Um, so when we say transformation, what do we really mean? It's like a, you can probably, if you're in a Petri dish, you can probably see the form change. But in, uh, at least in this talk, um, we'll say this transformation are measured by their gene expression, um, and then further measured by, say, mRNA level change over time. And then um, in this kind of systems, like stochasticity is um, one of the inherent part of it. Like, um, after all, they are chemical reactions. Like, two molecules has to collide together to, to make another, uh, another molecule or something like that. So stochasticity is just uh, inherent in the systems. And that's part of the reason why people tend to use stochastic differential equations as a model. It's not the model, but at least as, as a model for this type of, uh, this type of systems. Um, so this will boil down to how we infer SDEs, or how we infer a solution of SDEs. However, in our setting, um, how we basically how we measure mRNA level make this kind of inference extremely hard. Um, for at least two reasons, at least it's uh, not only these two reasons, I believe. So first of all, we don't really have continuous time measurement. If you want to use the traditional or most classic inference method on, on SDEs, you hopefully you will get the entire functional measurement. But we don't. We um, probably six time points is already luxury. Uh, I do see a poster with probably 20, but that's uh, that's super luxury. Um, sometimes only two, and there is a, a still thing you can do. And um, the most uh, another probably even worse situation is we have to kill the cell. So if you see what inside, you have to kill it. Then you never see one cell twice. That's a curse and a blessing in, in some situations, but uh, um, that's definitely a problem. So how do we deal with it? It's uh, definitely not a new problem, and people have thought about it for a while. Um, at least one of the current solution is the so-called Schrodinger bridge. Um, it's a optimal transport. It's not the optimal transport, but it's a optimal transport solution. It's a dynamic optimal transport regularized by, um, by entropy. So um, it's an entropy regularized uh, dynamic transport problem. And however, there are some problem with it. First, the most naive Schrodinger bridge is an optimal transport only between two time points. And actually, um, if you think about uh, diffusion models, it's one of, the, one of the special case starting from pure Gaussian noise to um, your target distribution um, with only two time points. And the other problem is, um, as we just discussed, it is a entropy regularized uh, optimal transport. The regularization is by entropy. And another way of stating that is, is trying to find trajectories that pass through the two, the two distributions, but most close to a burning motion. So you need, you need to choose such a reference measure, usually chosen as a burning motion, um, but you can choose other, other things. Um, but still, you need a single point reference. This could be more than a luxury for a biologist. We can think about, like yesterday, we, have, we heard about a uh, perturbed ODE talk, which is uh, awesome in, in the spotlight. Um, we can think about, OK, I maybe want to use that as my reference. 
but there's no way for me to figure out every single parameter out of blue just before I do anything. So that's too much. And uh, uh, using brand in motion is a default, but is brand in motion a good reference that you want your trajectory to, to be most close to? Not necessarily. So what we do here, not only us, and apparently I figured out yesterday, Stephen, I don't know where, where he is, he also come up with this idea and we almost did it at the same time. Um, so we provide, provide a extension of Schrodinger bridges. We handle multiple time snapshots and we choose the reference um, on the fly by iterative procedure, not only fix that reference um, in the beginning so that uh, this method could interpolate and uh, it's beyond piecewise interpolation, and it showed better performance in both simulated and real data. So let's uh, think about the setup. We, we, we all okay with me saying, ah, um, we never have continuous time measurement and we kill cell. But what that really means mathematically or schematically is let's think about we don't sequence at all. So if we don't do any experiment, and each cell will has, for instance, you have only, think about two genes. It has two traject, uh, each, cell will have a trajectory, like from these expression, this expression level of gene one and gene two, and eventually it goes to these places. For instance, it's a, it's a differentiation, might go to another cell type where it become cancer. Um, I only show six, but in data, hopefully we have more than six. And to see the first batch of sequencing at time step zero, we kill the first two trajectory, we see this two cells, and we'll never see the trajectory ever again, because they're dead. And then in the first time step, um, you see another two cell and you kill the trajectory again. You never see it once more. And then in third, um, you kill it again. So if you think about it, uh, just look at this figure, you probably could tell, yeah, there is some curvature there. Um, so our goal is really to infer these trajectories you didn't see, or actually you will not be able to see because you kill cells. Um, but we infer this trajectory or sample these unobserved trajectories. Um, more practically, um, beyond schematic, um, what we do is we have to still tell that whether we work really well is we would retain some validation time steps. For instance, we have uh, five, training time, five training snapshots here and I will, we would retain something in between to see if our if at least our um, infer trajectory would pass through this retained uh, data. And we would say, um, we'll, be s we'll say we're successful if we at least see uh, our, our trajectory pass through this retained thing and we do some numeric measurements on that. So this, uh, this would hopefully be a successful example that we infer these trajectories going with this curve and these, and these points are uh, retained as validation. I probably get it wrong, but uh, we retain some validation data <laughs> and to see if we pass through it. So um, as we just uh, had a talk about optimal transport, let's have a quick review of Schrodinger bridge as optimal transport. So it is a optimal transport. It's a, it's a dynamic optimal transport. And the intuition is you want to find those paths that pass through the two distributions, if you start from the most naive Schrodinger bridge, two distributions and most close to a reference measure, which is usually chosen as a, um, as a burning motion. Then if you chose burning motion as a reference, as a entropy regularized. But the issue is first you really need, uh, if you have multiple time steps, you really wanna use them. And actually people shown that if you do it naively, it becomes, um, piecewise interpolation, like multiple marginal Schrodinger bridge is essentially doing it piecewise in consecutive pairs. And then it requires a fixed reference point, um, usually as burning motion. Actually, I took some time to try to figure out why it is a burning motion, and it actually dates back to, to Schrodinger, because it's called Schrodinger bridge. And his original problem is, okay, I see a whole bunch of gas molecules, and move from one configuration, which is not uniform, and to another configuration, which is also not uniform. So how do these gas molecules move? In their situation, brain in motion is a correct reference because it's, 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 it's gas molecules moving under thermal fluctuation. They are moving according to brain in motion. 
However, if Schrodinger himself is here, he would say don't use it for biology systems because we are not in a closed system. We have energy intake and we don't really respect entropy laws. And he himself even wrote about it saying what organisms feed upon is negative entropy. Like we don't respect those. But beyond that, beyond this optimal transport viewpoint, there is another useful viewpoint is um, it is also a projection method. Think about your data or all the possible um, trajectories um, that pass through your, your data distribution leave in a family. And you start with a reference family, a single reference family. And then Schrodinger Bridge solution is a projection, is a specific type of projection to the family that passed through all your data. This is where we start to think about how we, um, how we would extend it. So let's still start with a family that we, we ask this family is the family that all possible dynamics that pass through all your marginals or snapshots. And then um, Schrodinger bridge would be, let's start from a single, from a single point. Let's find that projection and, and that's our solution. So what about we start with a family of reference. For instance, I really enjoy that spotlight, so I'm gonna use that as, a, as my example. Um, you are perturbed ODE as your model family. And we choose the initial point. It could be brain motion if you move all the dynamic parameters to zero. Then we could do this first step, Schrodinger bridge. It's the usual Schrodinger bridge. Start from a reference, go to your family. That's our first step of iterated procedure. It gave the current reference, find the Schrodinger bridge solution. But we can move back to our reference and find the next better reference, reference point by projecting back. Um, which we showed this is basically boiled down back to a regression problem. And then, after finding this better reference, we can do our Schrodinger bridge again, and do that until some, uh, until we're satisfied, or converge, sometimes they converge, um, it may not necessary, but until we're satisfied. And by these iterative minimizing, this distance, actually measured by KL divergence, will always be reduced. So we have to test it in practice in both simulated data and, and real data. I will show some simulated data here, but uh, feel free to check out, or please check out our paper for some real data situation. So we compare with two baselines. The vanilla Schrodinger bridge is you just do piecewise interpolations. And one thing uh, called deep momentum Schrodinger bridge uh, by Chen and Aliyah in 2024. Their idea is basically, let's think about my particles, single cells, to have inertia, so that it will, it will overshoot a little bit. Let's think about not only, not only position, but also, but also their momentum. And the metric we use to test success is first visual representation. It should at least pass through your, your left outs. And we also measure Wasserstein 1, which is also called uh, Earth Movers Distance, between the samples of our inferred time step um, infra trajectory at each uh, holdout time step and our holdout, holdout data distribution. Well, let's, uh, sorry, let's, uh, let's went over this, uh, this first uh, set of experiment. So our method is in the middle, hopefully you can see my mouse, and these are holdout data, every other steps are holdout. So our method seems to pass through most of the holdouts, and if you only do piecewise interpolation, um, the method will be, oh, sorry, those people cannot see it, but um, uh, the, uh, the naive Schrodinger bridge doing piecewise interpolation, they will just overshoot, it will miss the second point because it just doesn't know there is a curvature there. Uh, DMSB seems did reasonably well because you have this inertia behavior that it will overshoot a little bit, um, but this is not the end of the story. We also tested, uh, this is one example, as a uh, Probably if you're a systems biologist, um, you're very familiar with this example. It is one of the minimalist example of a biological clock having uh, three, prote uh, three mRNAs that uh, suppress each other and then you will see this rotation behavior. So this is a very good test bed because it has rotation and if you do, um, if your method is unaware of these curvature behavior, there's no way you really do it. So our method seems being able to sort of infer that we have this rotations uh, because you have multiple, uh, multiple time steps so that um, by, by having this interpolation, well, 
by, by choosing the best reference, it learns the curvature and was able to pass over this holdout site. And similar behavior as the last example I showed, if you do this vanilla uh, piecewise interpolation, it will miss all these, uh, uh, these validations because it's just uh, piecewise connecting. And does the deep momentum thing did better? It's, uh, it's not piecewise connecting anymore, but still, um, it's still, after, after all, it's a Schrodinger bridge. It's, uh, it has this um, brain in motion reference and is still trying to connect dots. And um, for a summary, that uh, we propose a new method based on Schrodinger bridge that first learn the unobserved trajectories from sample snapshots across uh, multiple time points and requires a family reference instead of a single point. And we validate the experiment, uh, we validate our method with a simulated and real data experiment. Um, since our method outperform our baseline both in visually and in Wasser Stein one. And please check out our paper. And if you have further questions, feel free to email me. And I'm looking for interns if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, internships. <laughs> Thank you. That was a really nice talk. Uh, I was uh, very interested in, um, uh, maybe you have explained it, I just didn't get it, but uh, what is a class of model that you're considering when you do your refinement in your experiments? Ah. And how do you design these kind of models? Like how much biological knowledge can you add? Yes. Can you transfer this across data sets? I mean, if you had some you know, different data sets or how much parameter sharing could you somehow get from that or, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll answer it as two parts. So first part is how we choose the reference, and second part is if we have multiple data, uh, data set, how do we share? Um, so first part is harder than the second. I would say for, uh, for the real data experiment in our paper, we, uh, it's cell differentiation, so we end up using a gradient field. because That's because of what, what intense uh, landscape. And if you have better sense of what, uh, what the systems look like. That's why I always use the example of, of the perturbed ODE yesterday, because it, it seems to be a good choice or at least a starting point. Um, I don't think I have a very good default to give you more than, um, yeah, you use, your <laughs> use your biological knowledge. And I, I hope there is a better way to choose this reference, but at least it's uh, not one single point. And to the second part, I would say um, the first, the first, uh, the first step, the first step projection, the Schrodinger bridge. Once you fix the reference family, you can do it separately. And then the second second step projection is essentially a regression problem. Then you you just pull the likelihood. Then should be fine. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.